Uh, it's time for us to ask some very big existential questions about leadership in Ghana. It's quite clear that all, uh, so many of the leaders in this country are lawyers. Quite clear. So if as a nation we insist on choosing lawyers as our leaders, then should we have a second look at how we train lawyers? Mm. Yes, is there something about the way we train them that makes us end up with the kind of leaders we have, which clearly uh, are not doing what we need them to do to move this country to where it needs to be? Let's talk about it. This is all sparked by an article written by Dennis J. Jomo. Uh, he's the managing partner of Law Plus. He's an attorney at law uh, and a former lecturer at the Gimpa Law School as well as the Central University's Faculty of Law. He joins us actually uh, on the phone. Dennis, what a pleasure. Good morning. Good morning, Kodjo. How are you doing? Always good. And thank you so much for making the uh, time. And good to morning to us. Raymond on his on sartorial look when they went to greet the king. Hey, <laughs> you saw him, man. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Raymond will always dress up nicely for a little bit of, uh, you know, boys, boys shenanigans. Oh. <laughs> anyway, 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 before we get into it with Dennis, Raymond, um, you have the article that Dennis yes. wrote, right? Mm -hmm. Give us the gist of what he says. So it says it does appear based on data, lawyers and will be lawyers form majority of leadership of this country, from members of parliament to chief executives and also CEOs. And it proceeds to say that they were trained uh, by the faculty of law and the Ghana School of Law. In this regard, one way of trying to deliver this country is to see the legal training as the hub of leadership and a tool for changing the destiny mm -hmm. of this country the content of the training of the law student is mostly bereft of critical thinking uh, uh, learning or solution oriented training they are made to believe that critical thinking and finding solution will be gathered from reading cases and statutes or what he calls pure law mm. he believes that the legal education in ghana should not be restricted to what he calls pure law without any attention to justice leadership history and solving the ghana problem mm. and he's asking how many books on justice or leadership are lostness made to read how many books on critical thinking are lostness made to read and if we confirm that the thinking of the ghanaian is that a political leader must be a lawyer how do we get them to read on history leadership and public policy solutions as part of their training mm. and he says gradually the ghanaian law student is a powerpoint student mm. solving past questions uh, students a lecturer who has no PowerPoint is seen to be odd. And from his experience, the most difficult question will be, what do you think? Mm. As in, the law student uh, know that the solution may sometimes not be in the precedence, but in carving out a solution outside the precedence, which may not be in pure, but in ingenious African custom or a proverb car from out of the law, legal education should go beyond pure law mm. reform of legal education can be a tool to change this country for the better interesting interesting now uh, dennis i was thinking about this last night i realized that look yeah. the reality of how lawyers are trained is that you are taught to unshackle yourself from um, moral anchors okay so you can argue one position today and argue the opposite tomorrow with equal fervor that is your training you are trained to do this now <laughs> uh, of course once you become a politician this becomes a wonderful tool so that you can uh, you know you can you can flip flop however you want to defend whichever position is 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 appropriate or is is convenient at the time you are saying that we should buck this trend and t stop training lawyers to be sharks and teach them to be what instead fishermen <laughs> so so so, so could you, it, it's not it, it's, it's your position that lawyers are uh, can you hear me yes yes we can hear you your position that lawyers are trained to be shark is m mostly incorrect it's about how the people view lawyers based on how we see lawyers more or less being involved in drama, among other things. But remember that one of the core requirements of being a lawyer is that you must be of good character. And if you look at our qualification requirement, if you are not of good character, you will not be called to the bar. Mm. 
Um, and, and so there is also a perception that the people have, and, and, and some of them is based on cultural aspects, which lawyers do not have control. Once one becomes a lawyer, the society raises you a certain level that you are not. Mm. Okay, this is that we defer our reasoning and think that the lawyer has a more superior reason, which mostly, you know, we will say we will refer to ourselves as very learned and understand the position. Mm. So th- th- it's not that lawyers have been trained to be sharks, but lawyers have been trained to use their training tool to solve the legal cases. So if the case does not, if the matter does not resolve in terms of legal case, the, the traditional lawyer's training it's about an issue coming up, looking at the precedent, looking at the rules, and solving the personal problem of the case before the court. But if the of Ghana are not, all of them are not in court, how do we continue? Hmm. Wait, have we lost Dennis? Hello? Right, I think we, we, we need to reconnect uh, with Dennis. The very important point he's mm-hmm. making there about the, uh, the characteristics of legal training. Mm. and uh, what sort of outcomes are sought. This is a message a lawyer sent to me. Mm. Said, Talking about lawyers, here's one of the principles of law quoted by a former Supreme Court judge. In law, the truth does not matter as long as it cannot be tendered as evidence in a case. Mm. This is why some lawyers who have no conscience can argue in a case where it's obvious they are lying through their teeth. That's what he said. Of course, the reference to the case is in which Ben Samuels was charged with contempt of court for say, uh, C. Jaban lied in his, uh, for saying that C. Jaban lied in his submission in a case. That's what he was referencing anyway. Right. Oh, that's interest, an interesting perspective there. Um, I think we, uh, uh, we, we, we need to reconnect with Dennis there. But, you know, the, the reason why I asked him that question mm-hmm. is, is partly what you read, mm-hmm. okay? That the training of a lawyer is that you, you have certain rules by which you can, either, you can win a case. Mm-hmm. There are certain rules. It's not about being a good person. That, that's irrelevant. It's about playing, it's like, it's a game of chess with rules, right? It's about making the right moves with the tools you have in order to emerge victorious. It completely sets aside any concept of right and wrong. It's about positions, which position prevails, which argument, you know, is superior. Mm -hmm. It's not about who is right and who is wrong, who is a sinner and who is a saint, which argument is superior? So the training of a lawyer is to make the superior argument, not to do the right thing, necessarily. Dennis joins us uh, again. Uh, thank you for your patience, Dennis. You were making an important point before the break about the, the nature of legal training and what lawyers are, are designed to do. Please continue. Okay, so, so the point I was making is that... Um, the, the most superior argument may not be the most popular argument, okay? And and lawyer is... Because remember that the same is not the same unless the same is self. Hmm. Uh, and, and, uh, and the training of lawyers, and understandably, is to be using the tools of lawyering to protect the interests of a client or to uphold justice. Hmm. But this may not necessarily be a solution for the state. And, and I make this point because if you look at the data, there are three arms of government. The judiciary, understandably, is made up of lawyers. We have currently over, over about 479 judges within our judiciary. Majority have, a, apart from the career magistrate, all of them have a legal background. Right. If you look at the executive, your president is a lawyer. Uh, if you look at your legislature, your speaker of parliament, the two deputies are lawyers. Your ministers are lawyers. Now, and, and it comes back to our understanding of even democracy. Hmm. We refer to democracy as kebima min hmm. Talk, make I talk. If the understanding of the Ghanaian democracy is about we talking, who best is placed to talk better than a lawyer? And, 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 and I urge you to consider this. How many of our mates, who did brilliant science and math quiz or national science and math quiz, who, by the Ghanaian definition of being very sharp, ended up in leadership in this country? <laughs> Wait, well, you can ask one. yourself, because you can ask yourself, those who went to brilliant science and math quiz <laughs> during your school time, the two or three people who represented the school, who were first in the whole school, where are they now? Yeah. Because 
the nature of it is also not the issue that because lawyers are the ones we are, but lawyers are the ones who offer themselves for leadership. Because the medical doctor, the engineer, he looks at the system and thinks that, you know what, I'll, I don't think I'll have time for this, or I don't think that maybe I have the, 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 the spirit of numbness to be able to understand or, or feel what the Ghanaian goes through, or I, the system is too tough, or the system may not favor me, or I don't have the, the, the ingredients or level of trickery put on put to be able to go around the ordinary Ghanaian because the demands that ordinary Ghanaian puts on leadership in this country sometimes is amazing and mind boggling. So yeah. if we have come to the conclusion, as we sit now, majority of leadership is from lawyer. And to the extent that when you have your full time minister going to a full time law school because he has acknowledged that having a, a lawyer as a tool will help me to become a better minister. When you have a full-time CEO going to full-time law school, it tells you that he thinks being a lawyer will help me as a tool to become. When you have a full-time journalist spending time going to law school or being at the law faculty, he or she understands that being a lawyer will help me better my craft as a journalist. Hmm. And eventually, we have a situation where lawyers are the most confident to offer themselves for leadership. But how do we, if that is the case, how do we ensure that the, in the training of a lawyer, we also let him understand that he is not just going to solve people's personal problems, he is not just going to solve people's commercial problems, but it's possible that throughout his training, there will be a zeal to, fail, to serve the nation. And if it's time to serve the nation, well, how have we equipped him to be in a position to serve the nation? Mm. And, and sometimes, through no fault of yes, you know, you may have not have a clue on how to solve the problems of the nation. You may have a clue of how to solve your family problem, but not the problem of the country. And mm. so if we come to the conclusion that majority, as we speak now, so we change the structure of the economy, we change our structure of the democracy that we have, it will appear that lawyers will continue to dominate leadership and public leadership of this country. So mm. in that regard, can we use it as a tool so that at the law faculty, we can say that there is an, a core requirement Okay, where lawyers are made to take on, on public leadership, not just leadership per se, on public leadership. There are some people who may be fantastic corporate leadership, but with terrible public leaders. Mm. And, and, and we look at it, what would make us better in terms of public leader? How can we bring in new courses that the state wants to go? AI is coming. How does AI impact constitutional law? How does AI impact you know, criminal law? And among other, where deep fake is coming, where I can just take your picture and make a whole voice around you, and make it so that you're answering the speakers. New developments are coming. How do we prepare the lawyer in leadership to understand it? Because you, if you ask your friends who are ministers, 80% of your time are made to receive visitors. 80%. You go to a minister's office, full time he's receiving visitors. He doesn't have time to even read. Hmm. And, and that is a question that we have to... We, we have a democracy where you have to pay delegates before you can become elected. So before you even come to power, you are engaged in electoral of practices before you can get into leadership of this country. So how do we, get, if we, we consider the data shows that majority of them are lawyers, or even those non-lawyers, are having a lifelong dream of becoming lawyers, and they think that lawyers can be the tool to solve the problem of this country, how best can we prepare them so that so it changes, and I wonder when it will change, hmm. at least before one becomes a leader in this country, you can be able to solve it. Because right. solving problems of this country is about who can shout most. We are hmm. discussing problems of this country based on the people who shouted most. You can solve people who are shouting most, and the proximity to power in Accra will pay attention to it. But hmm. Boku has been on, in care for you for the past almost 30 years. What have we done about it? Yeah. And, and I think that we coming back to say that lawyers are producing the leaders of the country. And just about, about the, 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 the institution that produces university students for the past 20 years have not changed. If you're Augustine, it's in France, it's Sopokwa, it's Prempe. These are the dominant schools. So if we see that leaders of this country are going to come from these schools, how do we help them? Mm. How do we say that, you know, in universities, we know that the test phone and the pain and the FRC president will end up being the leaders of, of political leaders. How do we ensure that we have leadership institute to ensure that before mm. you can become a student leader, so you qualify or you have done this number of courses on leadership or training, we will not allow you to participate in the election of FRC or pain or so that at least the people will be philosophical and understand why they are in leadership. Mm. 
Yes. So now, I, I think being in the classroom and out of the classroom, interacting with young men, I think we, we need to go back to the drawing board and not mm. talk ourselves into development, but rather work our way into development. Right. Uh, if you just joined us, we're talking to Dennis uh, Jay Jomo. He's a managing partner of Law Plus, uh, former lecturer at the Gimpa Law School and the Central University Faculty of Law. We're talking about lawyers. They make up the majority of our leaders in this country, in public office. And we're wondering, is there something we need to do about their training to make them serve those roles better for the benefit of our state? That's what we're discussing with Dennis. Now, um, Dennis, so what would you physically change? about the way we train lawyers what you you talked about introducing uh you know courses on say problem solving or critical thinking or justice what would these courses entail what are the specific concepts you would want to introduce into a lawyer's training to make them better public leaders key things i think we have to if we and this is this proposal is a bespoke proposal for ghana mm. it may not apply to other countries uh, I think that we we need to look at how we can introduce elective or core subjects. Because remember that ordinarily, when people get into schools, um, they they want to pass the exams. How do we move the mind of the person from passing exams to being demoted in its entirety? And and I believe there is a need to bring in courses. In my opinion where people are being trained on, first of all, public leadership, public service, right. as a course itself. Okay? And, and this must become core. And the requirement of a lawyer being of good character should not just be left for the law school for profession, but how do we bring ethics training and, and into the training of the faculty of law and and i can tell you that ashasi has taken the lead when it comes to leadership and ethics it's a major part of their of their training in the university so in the university of ghana or or, or law faculty in kenya now they're about taking faculty of law ethics has to be taught being of good character has to be taught public leadership as well as private leadership has to be made part of the training and most importantly how do we also train them on new things that are coming up. And, and so by the time that you're in law school, we may want you to choose a course, not just on law. You may be made to take a, law, a course on economics, a course on technology, a course on new development of how we see the world changing, on, on, on geopolitics. Because remember that if he comes into politics, he's, he's made a minister for foreign affairs. I think that he should understand geopolitics. And these are the things that we think, uh, I think can be brought in uh, to help the law students. So I get the And remember that the core courses that enables an LLB holder to enter law school has been defined in statute. And it's the same criminal law, civil law, for the past, since 1960, has been the same. We added three additional courses to it. But the General Legal Council, which is in charge of legal education, do have the power to add some of these things to it. And most importantly, I think that we should not allow our law students to be relying solely on past questions and, and, mm. and solely on, on PowerPoint, but engage them into critical thinking in terms of how they deal with matters beyond just the law to social problem that we have to solve. Hmm. So, Dennis, I raised the question earlier. I wonder what your take will be on it. You know, by the time a person enters law school, they're an adult, almost without exception. They are all adults, At which which means they've already formed their personal What, what is your definition of adult, by the way? Oh, I, I'm saying anyone above 18 is an adult. Yeah. Oh, okay. 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 So, so, yeah, that almost without exception, by the time anyone enters law school, they are an adult, which means they have formed their characters already. You know, so if somebody is, uh, you know, has, is, is corrupt, they're already corrupt by the time they get into law school. Which means that whatever tools they acquire in law school will just make them better at whoever they are. So if you're corrupt and you go to law school and you, you learn critical thinking, it'll just make you a better criminal, won't it? Uh, I, I think um, you may be 
I think that's, that's uh, 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 an idiosyncrasy that is based on maybe your personal bias. And I'll give you a practical example. By in the, whenever we went to the city, I think that in this country, the critical time of forming the character and what determines whether you succeed or not is not at the university, but at the secondary school level. Yeah. Now, the class that was the most stubborn during your time, for you, in mm. Augustine, I can tell you that if you go to Augustine today, it will be the same class. And it's amazing how cosmic, you know, the cosmetic, the, the mystic world makes it. Mm. If you go to one dormitory from Tiny Memorial, it may be your, and I, I, and I cast your mind back. In secondary school, there are certain dormitories or, or houses that were, had the stubborn people. If you go there today, you still have the same stubborn people. However, there was one gatekeeper of, an, of a master or a lecturer or Roman father who kept the gate of discipline. And certain people were molded to change while they were in secondary school. Mm -hmm. So I think that there's a possibility of change. There are certain people who have attempted the law and realized that law was not for them and they left. So I get the point that, you know, certain characters may have been formed. However, certain characters may also be molded to see the other side of the argument and to see the other side of, 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 of the conversation. And, 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 and my view is that whether we like it or not, whether it's bad character or they have been molded, as a fact, lawyers are going to be in charge of the leadership of this country because maybe engineers and doctors are not offering themselves as much as lawyers are doing. In that regard, we cannot throw our hands in despair, but at least imbibing them leadership and discipline, even sense of timing, respect and time. Kujo, the biggest problem we are having in this country, even people, even artisans, people with, with uh, ethics, it's not about just lawyers away, but the entire country have an ethical problem. Tailors are not showing on time. People are not coming to programs on time. People are late for it. The bigger issue of transportation. So I think that if you are able to get your leaders to understand these ethical values, these things imbibing them, in, 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 in the in nutshell, they can be able to impact it on other people or even understand how to solve this problem, mm. you know, than to talk our way into solving problems instead of solving the problem itself. So I get your point. However... The character of the people can be molded, and it depends on imbibing in them. You are what you are because some of the characters was involved in you from the beginning. You wake up in the morning and pray. You didn't. Mm. We're not born praying because your mother insisted that you have to pray. There are certain conduct that you do, and everybody will ask you, is this, is this person actually go to a Catholic school? I'm yet to meet somebody who went to a Catholic school and cannot say a basic prayer mm. because you are made to pray all the time. And that character, whether you are bad or not, once you go to a Catholic school, at least you'll be able to say a prayer could maybe short, but still impactful. Yeah. So, you know, I, 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 so you're, you're sure that we are not introducing these principles at the wrong time in their training. I ask this because, you know, when I did my first degree and we were taught something called communication skills, which contained literally everything I should have known before I wrote O levels or A levels, everything about how to write an essay how to compose a document, you know, how to write a letter, all of those basic communication skills that I needed to answer, to, to, to properly express myself at the earlier stage of my education were taught me at university. And guess what? 80% of those I sat in class with have forgotten what they were taught in communication skills because they only did it as an as a credit that they couldn't avoid not because they were learning skills that they thought they would need in life so today you pe you have people in professional roles who still don't know how to write letters who still don't know how to compose reports even though they spent hours in a lecture theater being taught so i'm wondering does this not suggest that even though you are you are right that we need to teach the right things to future leaders that we need to be catching them perhaps younger? Well, I agree with you. But you see, the Ghana problem is a bigger problem. So by the time you, you, you look at such a huge problem, you may not even know how to start it. I'm looking at what I call the low-hanging fruit that we can type to make impact. And, and, and just to support your position. For instance, when we were in primary school, we were made to say the national pledge and the national anthem on a daily basis. Yeah. On a day, every morning at assembly, you say, you sing it, and you got that the patriotic song was sung at the time that you didn't really understand what it meant to, to, to be patriotic. Mm. When you went to secondary school, it reduced to one or two. University, we never said it until you went for matriculation or 
or, or graduating. Mm. That's when we play. So it is not surprising that at the time of your formation that now you understand what it means of patriotic nationalism, all the things that were imbibed in you left you because the system were not trained to keep it up with you. Yeah. Okay? So I get the Ghana problem. I get that it should have been introduced earlier. It should have been made to, to be, have been done earlier. However, it's a bigger problem that we'll discuss. Maybe we'll try and solve it one way or the other. How? Mm. But that notwithstanding, we know that based on the data, all our leaders pass through this place. Based on the data, we know the sharp, you know, brilliant science and math school students who make it topmost pass mm. through the schools, the Presec, the Premper, the Pokwar. That's the schools that they go to. So how, if we want scientists to be developed in this country, where can we get them? Mm. You can get them at Presec, you can get them at St. Augustine. So how do we ensure that if we want scientists who will be willing to patent and, and be able to grow the economy, how do we have a special program? And, and, and Presec is leading in terms of brilliant science of mass schools because they have special programs for special people who are mm. doing the brilliant science of mass schools. It's not because Presec just allow the people to engage themselves. So Presec has taught the way that when you want to win brilliant science and math, and same for St. Augustine, people are building special centers. All boys are contributing and making sure that they are trained specially for that examination. Mm. Now, if that is a regard, if lawyers are supposed to train to solve the problem, what labs of leadership are we building to solve it? If we know that the SRC president will eventually become a politician, if we know that the the Commonwealth president will eventually become a politician. What labs are we building? Leadership labs are we building at the university to ensure that before you even get into student leadership, you actually even understand how to keep books, even basic finances, understand the procurement law, understand the public financial administration laws of this country. So we have done those models in a smaller fashion with brilliant science and math schools to make sure that certain schools win at the end of the day. And I'm saying, for the Ghana approach, why don't we use the faculty of law at the various centers, get the, 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 the institute of leadership, and that, you know what, we think the law faculty are going to produce leaders for the next 100 years. How do we invite in them and get them to study it on a daily basis before they use, so that when they get into public space, they can be able to, to make an effective determination and save the soul of this country? Hmm. Now, let me ask about what you think will happen if nothing changes. We have a younger and younger people making their way into law school we have the new generation also making their their way into the profession gen z's are coming along and we we know the general concerns that older generations have about gen z's and by the way this is this has always been the case the older generation is always worried about the the, the younger ones mm -hmm. but currently the, the, that's what's happening everybody is concerned about this lack of um uh, a fear of consequences mm -hmm. that uh, the new generation seems to have how social media is shaping their thinking where everybody considers themselves to be a brand uh, where how you know uh, outward appearance has become more important than uh, inner substance you know all of these worries that are raised about the new generation so what what how do you perceive lawyers from this generation will actually be when they also end up taking up the mantle of leadership uh, First of all, it's only in Ghana that a 50-year-old man is still considered a young man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's be real and tell the old leadership the truth that they have disappointed this country. If you look at what we, we, we have been through as a people and the benefit that the young generation, how old were these so-called old generation? when they became ministers in the older gen in, in, in the far when Ghana became independent. Okay, so if we do not have practical measures of trying to imbibe leadership and potential people who want to offer themselves for leadership, we will be worse off than we are. And, and bear in mind, we do not go to law school to try, in terms of the mentality of people who enter law school like myself, to try and solve the problem of the society. We enter law school to solve our personal problems. That is how come your parents took you to the school, to solve your personal problem and to solve the problem of your family. And, but in the course of that training, you realize that there is a sense of nationality. You can offer yourself for leadership. And I can tell you, at every law faculty, majority of people who are students over there are students who are student leaders 
at the end, they were school prefects, at the, they are dining hall prefects, and most of them end up in the law faculty. So the law, lawyering has been seen as a tool that are meant for leaders. So no matter how it is, it will be like, but I'm saying that if we do not solve it by practical measures, putting in courses, making these courses a core requirement, and ensuring that if you do not pass these courses, you cannot enter law school, or if you do not pass these courses, you cannot become a lawyer. Any course that is made a core requirement, I can tell you, students study it and study it better. And it also requires for those of us who are also instructors in the course, or new instructors will be brought, also know that we, the people that are before me are potential members of parliament. I am in a class where I have about five members. Five of my colleagues are members of parliament on both sides. So mm-hmm. if we do not do it, it will be not preparing leaders to solve the problems of the country than personal problems. And, and through no fault of yet, because if you know the amount of pressure that society puts on these are leaders on a daily basis, ask any politician friend that you have, on a weekly basis, they spend not less than 5000 to 10000 or more transferring to people. And, and, and so we, if we want to change, and we are quick to bring in Singapore, we are quick to bring in China, we are quick to bring in all these leaders, even Rwanda of late, it's because we took the bull by the horn, put in certain measures that make people uncomfortable, and decided to solve it. And, 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 and I think that when we start having a conversation that we think we need to go beyond the law and see to prepare the lawyer for leadership, just as we are preparing scientists for leadership, if that does not happen, and apart from the lawyers, how do we get scientists to be also be interested in the leadership of this country? How do we get scientists, be engineers who solve problems, scientists who have more patents in solving problems, to be interested in leadership? And I believe when we have conversations with the scientists, they may tell us why they are not interested and why lawyers are interested. And I'm saying that once the data shows lawyers are interested, let's solve the lawyer problem. And when the scientists become interested in putting themselves out, we can find measures or programs to get them interested in leadership. Otherwise, mm. I believe it will still be the same. Mm. This is thought-provoking, Dennis. I, I want to thank you for your time with us this morning um, and uh, giving us something to really mull over uh, regarding uh, the, the quality of leadership that we can produce in the future.